Could you manage? Were you aware? Which part was difficult? Tell me. Finding awareness of awareness that was like really. Haan, so first I'm aware of the body. Okay? The attention is outside. Like no one is not seeing Just the attention is outside. The direction is outside. Yeah? Because I'm observing the body, then I'm observing the breath, some pain came up, I'm observing that, I'm moving, I'm shifting, I'm aware of that. Yeah, then some thought came in the mind about the day, about office, something she said at home, something came up. Yes, this is also attention is still outwards. Then what was the next step? The one who was observing. You start observing that. I put it into a meditation. This is not even done with meditation. With eyes open, you are observing me. Who is your object? You. Ekta is the object. Who is the subject? Me. Are you aware of the object right now? Yes. Are you aware of the process of seeing the object? Yes. Yeah, forget about all the other four senses. Only seeing. Are you aware of seeing? Yes. Now, are you aware of the one seeing? It's very amazing. It's a totally different world. Yeah, yeah. So, you became aware of awareness? You got there? Fantastic. Are you getting it? See, you were now listening to both of us talking. Yeah. Are you aware that you are listening? That is awareness. Being aware of awareness. Just got into the door and you came out. Why? Because the attention is totally on Ekta. The attention is totally on this conversation. Now, at the same time, you can be aware of the way you are sitting like this and listening to Ekta and he's saying, yeah. Are you aware that you are blinking and you are shaking your head? Are you getting it? Ek second ke le, it comes for a second, it goes away. But it comes. Yes? Yeah. So, with eyes open, you are supposed to do this. Ask yourself the question, am I aware? Yes. So see, the yes came after a period. What happened in between? Thinking. Observing. Ah, you're observing. There's an inner quest. You're not thinking. There's no words in that. You were looking. Correct? Yeah. Something had turned inside and was looking. Am I aware? Yeah. 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 For a second, something stopped. What was that something that stops? Tell me. Identity. Something stops. Mind. The mind stops for a second. It ceases for a second. Awareness arises. Yeah, I'm aware. And then the mind comes back and says, yes, I'm aware. Are you getting this very, very clearly? Yeah. <coughs> you are looking at an object. This is just an object of seeing. The process of seeing is happening in between the subject and the object. Now, are you aware of the subject? Yeah, that's only stage one. There are more stages to come. Yeah, just stage one is recognizing the difference between awareness and the objects of awareness. Now have you reached stage one at least? You got the glimpse? Right now you can go there. Go for a second, even if it is one second. Become aware of your own self. Are you aware? Yeah? Now become aware of the one who is trying to listen to Ekta right now. There must be some thoughts also going on. But there is a witnessing consciousness behind. That quiet awareness behind. 
Be aware of that. You can't hold it, I know that. It's just the beginning. But I need each one of you to get a glimpse at least before I move ahead. Are you getting a glimpse of it? Yeah? So are you aware at the same time of the subject and the object and the process of seeing or hearing whatever is happening? Can you maintain that awareness? I know it's slipping. You're coming back. It's slipping. You're coming back. But at least you're coming back. So when being aware of something inside is like pursuing all this thing. And just being aware of that one, mind stops and like it takes the lag that far. Yes. That is like we're going back to reality again. Is Correct. Yes. So first... Because I, I keep telling you, ask yourself the question, am I aware? Your mind repeats it inside. Or you repeat it to yourself, whatever Ekta said in the last sentence, to be aware. Then the mind repeats. It's a little lost. It's looking, 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 looking. Suddenly it stops. The awareness arises, which is the answer. Then the mind says, yes, I'm aware. Are you noticing that? For the awareness to arise, for a second the mind stops. There's a quietness, then you know you're, you're aware and then you say yes. And the moment you say yes, it's gone. Correct? But it's interesting, especially to be aware of sensation and, you know, of yourself. Just like, you know, sensation is also the mind. What does the mind tell me? Thoughts, Thoughts. Sensations. sensations, perceptions. Perceptions. Perception means what? Feelings. Feelings. No, whatever you are perceiving, you can perceive this data, a room of people, you are perceiving this. You are perceiving words falling onto your ears, whatever you are perceiving. Data collection. Yeah, data collection. Whatever you are perceiving from this surrounding right now. Yeah, that is the perception. That is also happening at which level? Mind. 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 What is awareness doing then? What is happening at the awareness level? But when awareness, oh. observe awareness, there is nothingness. Ha. Ah. There is absolute nothing there. At least if you reach that understanding, there is nothing there. She is saying just pure awareness. Not the mind, not the body. Yeah, right now, you are talking to me. Yeah, you are observing. This is the object. That is the subject. And the process of seeing is happening. Forget all the hearing, other touch, everything we will forget. Only seeing. Only seeing. Yeah. Are you observing the one who is seeing? Are you observing the thoughts of the one who is seeing? Are you observing the body and the head nodding? Are you observing the observer? Yeah. What is the quality of this observer? What is the quality of the awareness? Very subtle. Very subtle. Subtle what? With a view it's gone. Like a flash of light. Okay. It's nothing. What else? It's still nothing then feels also it's everything. It's all yeah. it's too much theory. <laughs> right now only experience. Okay. <laughs> Ramana Marshi is going to wash out all your theory. No theory, only experience. What you are experiencing right now. What did you experience in that one moment when the mind stopped? Quietness. Quietness. So nothingness, quietness. Yes, Okay, yeah. What is the nature of awareness? You lose your identity. Like you suddenly, when, when you feel that nothingness, you lose your identity for that moment. That one glimpse. That's beautiful. So, in that moment, there is no I, but it's difficult because you just were in that moment for a split of a second and came out. 
Yeah. But what do you identify as I? Mostly I think this is I. I think uh, I is self. You think I is the body. I is self is a belief. I am trying to separate out belief from real experience. Are you getting it? It's going to be a hard session. Are you ready? Yeah, you have to uproot your belief. I am self. Have you seen the self? You've read it. You've heard somebody else say it. Because you say it, so I believe. So I, be, I believe you. Sir. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is belief equal to experience? No. Can we put belief in the parking lot? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's of no use because it is not my experience. Is this becoming clear? Then you are walking Ramana Maharshi's path. Then only will you understand. He is talking about hardcore experience only. Not belief. Not because somebody else says so. But only because I can experience it right now. So far very clear? Okay. So now what we did were two stages. Stage one, you recognize the difference between object and subject. What was the object? Body, Body breath, mind. Thoughts. What were the mind objects? Thoughts, feelings. Thoughts, feelings. Perceptions. Okay, perceptions. Sensations. Sensations whatever. Emotions. Everything, emotions, everything is mind object. Why? Because my attention is outward. Is this very clear? So what is stage one? Recognizing the difference between the subject and the object. What is the subject? Don't use that word. Again, you're using a word which is a fake word. We just put it in the parking lot. Yes? Awareness. That is all I can understand. Aware. I am aware. Very simple. Awareness word we all understand. Hindi mein batao. Jagruti. But you understand the word Jagruti and that's your experience? Or is that Ekta telling Shiva or Ekta telling Pavitra, Ekta telling Pavan? No, no. Is this your experience? Yes. The Jagruti for that one <coughs> glimpse, that one second, that awareness. First your Jagrut of the body, then your Jagrut of the breath, then your Jagrut of Whatever happened in the mind, some thought, some sensation, emotion, whatever drama happened. And then there was just pure Jagratta, of Jagratta. Yes? Are we all on the same page? So what is stage one? Yes. Differentiating subject and object. Subject is... <coughs> Awareness, Jagratta. That's all I know right now. No big words which I have no idea of. Clear? We finished stage one successfully. Okay. Again, we'll do it. You are now listening to me. Sound. Yeah, forget eyes. You're getting caught up in sight. Sound. My, my voice is reaching you. Yes, very, very clear. Yeah. The voice, that sound is a sound object. Yeah? Anshu is listening to the sound coming to Anshu. Yes? Who's nodding? The body is nodding. Yeah? Who is in agreement inside? Mind. Intellect. Mind, intellect. Yeah? These are all mind objects. Is there somebody observing the nod? Somebody inside Anshul observing the mind say yes and then the nod is happening. That is Jagruti. Are you getting it? Yes. You get a glimpse of it because you don't put your attention there. Your attention is always outside. Yeah. Now can you do this? 
attention outside also and attention inside also. Can you do that? Few seconds, even a few seconds. Every few seconds look in. I know you'll keep coming back out. And then this should maintain, huh? This should not go outside. Even if this I can maintain for a few seconds and I come back out. That's okay. But at least I become more Jagrit. Are you getting it? You understood just the topic right now. That's it. The question is, who am I? So is he asking, I this body? Is he asking, I that chattering mind? No. Who is he asking? I that Jagrita, that Jagriti, that awareness. But it has to be silent to even to get that. It's, it happens in a second. Either you get it or you don't. It's like that. Yeah. And it is really for somebody who has so much interest in himself or herself that the world doesn't matter. Yeah. I told you in the beginning, this is like a PhD level. Ramana Maharshi is the highest level. Yeah. There is a spectrum on which every spiritual speaker, seeker has to walk. Beginners come into spirituality with what? At what level do they enter? Patanjali. <laughs> okay, so yoga. Yeah, first when you got interested in yourself, you got more interested in keeping this body healthy. Yeah, you wanted to do some stretching. There was no idea of even any interest of the mind also. Yeah, so real... Absolute beginners begin at yoga. Yeah, few stretches, few asanas. I'm a very spiritual person. Yeah. Then you keep walking, keep walking, and then you realize a little more. I need a little more. You start pranayama, and you start other things, and you start this japa, that mantra, this, that, different, different things. Yeah. Then what happens? Yeah, then you hit a wall, you want more. Yeah, you're tired of the rites and rituals and bhajans and you want more. Then you step into meditation. Yeah, the quiet meditation. Till now you wanted the meditation that comes with some music, that comes with some drama. Yeah, some masala. And now you're like, okay, can we keep the masala aside? I want to become quieter. Then you climb up the spectrum. Still you need something like guided instructions to go into that silence. You're still needing something to nudge you. Yeah. And you come to a point where you don't want any nudge. The nudge also becomes noise. Yeah. Now you want pure silence. Yeah. And you come to a point in that pure silence, you go through, there are lots of phases of pure silence and you come to that highest point where silence is also not required now. Just that question, who am I, takes you into silence. Just that recognition of awareness takes you there. Now in your previous lifetime, probably you kick the bucket here or you kick the bucket here or you kick the bucket here. You don't know. Right? You come back with those karma sanskaras and when you are here, now you will begin at this point only. Yes? So now we are in the room at different levels, no? Can we not try to compete with each other? Yeah? You anyway compete in your outside material world. In the spiritual world, no competition. Yeah? We understand that we are at different levels. We honor and respect everybody's level. But we honestly recognize what is our level. Clear? Yeah? Yeah? And it's okay. We'll all get there. But understand, Ramana is the last step. It's the last step because there is not even meditation there. 
it's beyond meditation. I, I just put it in because I know most of you are used to meditation. Now a little background about Ramana. When Ramana taught, he taught just in silence. Even this who am I was not there. Yeah, Just in silence he came, he sat, everybody sat in silence and he left. So some people who were there at that last step, they just needed silence and it was fine. It worked for them. But then there were some people on the lower side of the spectrum who were like, you know, I need more. I need words. I need him to speak. I need him to give me some instruction. Yeah. So for those people, he gave who am I, the inquiry method. Clear? Yeah. Yeah, now then there were other people who said, oh, I always do japa, I like to do my mantra. Okay, that keeps you happy. No, you do that. It's not that he has advocated, but he will never come and tell you that, oh, you stop doing the Shiva. No, you do. If that makes you happy. Yeah, but what is his highest teaching? Silence. silence. Now for silence, you didn't need to come for a two and a half weekend, two and a half days of the weekend, right? Yeah, so we'll go with the who am I? Inquiry method. Yeah. When Ramana was very young, a young boy, he just had the fear of death come up. And instead of running away from the fear, I would say he meditated on the fear. He went into it. He embraced that fear. Yeah, Almost like, okay, if I die, so what? Let's see what happens. And he went into that state of awareness, that glimpse that you got. He went into that pure state and could stay there as a young boy. Yes, and that's when he had his first awakening. For a few days, he continued as a student in school, but he, he couldn't do that too long. He found it too fake and then he just went away to this mountain called Arunachala and he just meditated for a long time. Yeah? He found so much peace in this Jagrata or Jagriti or awareness. He maintained that stage for a long period of time. How you came out of it in a second? He didn't come out of it in a second. He could stay there, just be there without the mind pulling him out, without any sensations or pain dragging him out. Yeah, And that is why that's all he taught. Sit in silence. You go there. Clear? It's so simple. There's nothing more to teach. Just be in awareness. Shortcut. You are home. Yeah? But it is difficult for some of us to find the shortcut. So for some of us, he gave, who am I? If who am I is difficult to understand, you say, am I aware? Because that's a little easier, right? Yes. Am I aware? That also takes you the, to the same moment where the mind stops for a moment. You come to that nothingness or what did you call it? The quietness, whatever, that, that moment where it was quiet for a moment and again the mind came up with the answer. The same thing happens with the question, who am I? Yeah, But who am I is a difficult question sometimes because people are so body conscious. They think I am the body. That's why a mini step before you get to who am I is am I aware? And then once you are comfortable with this question and you keep coming to that same nothingness, that same quiet, and you ask, who am I? You'll come to the same quiet now. Clear? So let's say if uh, self are in the process of now understanding that, okay, awareness is going on. So why... Like body sensations, either in the form of pain or hunger or something. So how that plays a role in pulling it out from that particular state? It just pulls the attention out. 
the awareness only gets pulled out because awareness is only aware of the mind it is only aware of the body it is only aware of the sensations so the awareness has just started looking outside instead of looking at its own self like a mother does not take care of her own self when the children are very young she's just looking at the children and she doesn't care for her own body and her own mind and then suddenly one day she's sick and then the attention turns inward exactly the same thing happens here you are so lost in the world in the world of body and mind one day you fall sick you hate it you are stressed you want something more a thirst naturally arises this is a thirst for the mental health you don't know what it is you are just thirsty to know more you want to understand yourself you suddenly turned inwards yeah but again because of habitual pattern the mother looks at the baby again the same thing you do do you get it yeah this shuttling will happen but now with awareness you have to start looking in do you get it because of my past habit pattern i'm going to keep looking at my kid my husband my wife my child my job because of the past habit pattern i have to keep and i told you no what is the more sensible step Just both together 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 again i'll get lost because i'm not an expert yet it's okay the moment i remember again i'll get lost okay doesn't matter forgive let go don't beat yourself up again and again again and again again and again this is the abhyasa you are getting stage 1 very clearly yes you have to do this with eyes open no point doing it in meditation because you have a mental block that that which i achieve in meditation i cannot maintain it in my daily life whether you know it or not you have a mental block you might feel no no i don't have this belief it is a belief it is there otherwise you would have changed by now how many years have you been meditating have you become a quieter person i don't mean here i mean here <laughs> that's not happened means you have a mental block that that which happens in my meditation i'm not able to carry it into my open eye daily routine so what do i do with my open eyes i practice awareness here as well here here as well here yeah can you keep doing that today as we read as we go through the session i'll give you a break you'll go to the restroom so you are aware of everybody everything still aware of the one observing everything yes can we all do it yeah this has to go on continuously for the next two and a half days stage 1 very very clear what is stage 1 tell me in words who's object and subject so awareness and body mind body mind complex very clear okay so you have to do this during the break yes completely aware while talking while taking your cup and drinking water while using the restroom while whatever you're doing shifting moving sitting here sitting there but doesn't the different senses interfere with you? yes yes they are going to interfere no wait so that's how you have to become a master <laughs> you have to become a master i can see that oh <laughs> So now, now you have an excuse. If you don't listen to spouse, yes. <laughs> so consciously we have to make an effort to. Yes, to yes, it has to be a conscious effort, moment to moment to moment. Good, you are getting to stage two. <laughs>